Welcome to another edition of the Finish First Cycle Breaker Program. I am Judge Dawson. And if you've been tuning in, you know that we are all about leadership and empowerment and giving you the tools to take your knowledge and your life to the next level. See, oftentimes we get so bogged down on what happens every single day. And God forbid we're on social media and that either gives us a roller coaster up or down, depending upon what we see. Our emotions are affected. But I'm giving you tools every week on how you can take charge of your life. You don't have to be a victim of the emotions of other people. You don't have to be a victim to the ups and downs that life will take you through. Instead, you can find that steady ground so that you can achieve your goals. And that's the balance that we seek to achieve here with our Finish First program. So sit back and let's go. So we're making our way through the book called The Cycle Breaker. The Cycle Breaker is a book of five young men from the inner city who have found themselves in trouble. The great thing about that statement right there is it doesn't matter if you are from the inner city or outer city. It doesn't matter where you're from. There will be times in your life where you are tested. There will be times in your life when you come up against challenges and you have to figure out how to navigate those challenges so that you don't derail your entire future. And that's what this book is about. It takes the journey of five young men who were sent to court, but prior to their cases being resolved, they were sent to a cycle breaker camp. The purpose of that camp is to give them tools of transformation, tools that can give them the knowledge and the skills to take their lives to the next level. And most importantly, give them the tools and skills to make sure that they don't derail their future. Because even if you don't know where you wanna go, one thing for sure is that you don't wanna be locked up, you don't wanna be in somebody's jail, and you don't wanna find yourself years from now regretting the opportunities and the chances that you didn't take. And not just taking the chances, but taking them in a way that could strategically help you make it to the next level of your advancement, your family, your life, your job, whatever it is that you desire. There are tools and techniques to get there, and that's what this book is all about. So in the book, these young men are taken to this camp where they are isolated from the regular world. And what do I mean by isolated from the regular world? Where they're not affected by social media. They're not affected by the phone ringing every five minutes of somebody who needs something from them or somebody who wants them to do something that could derail their future. Instead, these young men are isolated in the sense that all they have is time and opportunity. Now, not all time and opportunity is good because if you're not on the right track, you can use that to cause further harm and pain in your life. But these young men, the goal is to make sure that they get the tools through Cycle Breaker Camp to take their lives to the next level. So as you've been watching and following me through this, move, through this book, we're talking about Jay. And Jay is the owner or the at least the leader of Cycle Breaker Camp. And he's been spending time investing in this young man. Now we're on chapter 14. Chapter 14, we're already dissecting what it means to be a Cycle Breaker. Remember, step number one is you have to admit that there is a need for a cycle to be broken. What in your life do you need to change? Maybe it's not your life. What in your family's existence needs to change? And maybe you can be the catalyst or the start or the jump off of that change. Maybe it's the community at large. What is it about the community that impassions you? Something that you want to change, something that you know can be a lot better. That's the first step of being a cycle breaker is to recognize the need for change. The second step is to commit to making that change, right? It's not enough just to say that, hey, I need to stop smoking. Well, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna commit to stop smoking? And that could be cigarettes, marijuana, whatever your choice is. It's not enough to say, hey, domestic violence has been a, a problem in my family for years. Now you have to take that next step, step number two, which is committing to being a part of that change. So that's where we are in Cycle Breaker Camp and that's where we are in the book. Chapter 14, commit to being the change that you want to see. And I'm looking down at my book. The quote I have for that chapter is, when you believe the impossible becomes possible. Again, when you believe the impossible becomes possible. When you commit to being the change, to actually embodying the change that you want to see, that change will come. And it's really just a mindset shift. It's a shift of your mindset. 
If you start saying, you know what, I'm going to walk in the purpose that I have for my life. I, I want the world to be better. I want people to be nicer. Then what does that require? How about you and I? Let's commit to being better or to being nicer. Once you make that commitment to the change, you'll begin to see the change. Before they knew it, Jay and the Seekers were at the cabin of enlightenment for several hours. And if you remember, these young men are off at a camp. And part of the camp is going to different areas of the camp. You have a place where they go to meditate. You have a place where they go to eat. You have a library. You have different activities. The cabin that they went to to often meditate, do yoga, and or hear lessons from Jay was called the Cabin of Enlightenment. To improve myself. It's not good enough to just be okay. You're not here just to be okay. You're here to be great. And the good news is that you have the capacity to do it. Only if you want to. So that's why we are seekers, that's right? So here's the takeaway from this. When you commit to being the change that you want to see, every ounce of your existence has to join in in that commitment. And I really think that that's a problem that we have with our generation today. We commit to certain things, but we're only halfway committed. I mean, you have, let's keep it real. You have people who are halfway into Christianity, halfway in the streets. What do I mean by that? Well, they go to church every day or every Sunday, at least. And then when they come home from church, you know, they're they're making twerk videos and putting them on Instagram. So they have their foot halfway in and halfway out. Now, that could work and it may work for quite a long time. But generally speaking, we are meant to be whole beings. And when you live inconsistent with your being, there will be chaos on the inside. There's a Bible verse that says a house divided against itself cannot win or cannot prevail, right? That basically means when you are living inconsistent to what you believe or what you've committed to, there's going to be chaos and there's going to be turmoil in your own, in your personal life. So my suggestion is that when you fully commit to something, fully commit to it. And that's going to be hard because now you have to block out all the distractions you have to ignore everything that everyone else is doing. You have to ignore every party that someone invites you to. You have to ignore every time someone offers you a drink if you've committed to not drinking. Every time someone offers you marijuana when you've committed to not smoking marijuana. Every time someone gets on your nerves and tests you when you've committed to long, no longer committing domestic violence or assault. It will be hard, but when you are committed you have to let your entire being be committed to the commitment. That's a lot of commitment, right? But that's what it takes. You have to go all in with your commitment. Seekers, that he is fully committed to his goals and that every hour or every minute that he had, there was extra time as opposed to wasting it, scrolling on Instagram, wasting it, arguing with somebody on the phone, wasting it, watching videos and TV that doesn't add to his productivity. Jay wanted to make sure that he was doing something to better his life. There you go. That's another edition of Here Comes the Judge with Judge Dawson. I don't want to take a lot of your time. I just want to give you value. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. I will be back next week. And remember, we're making our way through the Cycle Breaker book, a book I wrote just to give you tools and techniques on how to achieve your greatest life. Remember, I'm a judge and a yogi, and I see so much destruction in this world that my mission is to give back. So go to my website, judgedawson.com, grab some of the free ebooks, grab the Cycle Breaker book, maybe sign up for a yoga class. Hey, whatever we have to do to increase our productivity and our positivity during this pandemic. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Love you guys. Until we meet again, namaste.